Warning, the following video may offend some viewers. Snowflakes are advised to prepare a box of tissues before watching. A tradie has confronted three bandits armed with machetes who terrorised a service station attendant in Melbourne South East. Police are appealing for witnesses and victims to come forward following a brawl on the foreshore of St Kilda in Melbourne. Disturbing statistics tonight that reveal which suburbs across Melbourne are being targeted in home invasions on a daily basis. The Andrews government has been labelled gutless and pathetic by a jewellery store owner who's been twice targeted by an African crime gang. Four people were injured as a gang of young men tried to gate crash an end of year presentation night. Good evening. We begin with some breaking news on the out of control brawl outside a Collingwood pub involving 200 youths. Suburban mayors have swung their support behind the Sudanese community, insisting Melbourne does not have an issue with African gangs. Despite the riot in Taylor's Hill last week, they blame the media and politicians for inciting racism against Sudanese youth. This is Melbourne's world-famous Moomba Festival in 2016. Africans are running riot, fighting with each other and terrorising festival goers. What is supposed to be a family affair descended into a nightmare of violence and terror. The issue of African crime is a hot topic in Australia these days as we experience an epidemic in home invasions, robberies and other violent crimes at the hands of these foreigners. Members of the Australian community are becoming increasingly concerned about the issue, while those charged with solving it sit on their hands and virtue signal. You see, in the current year, because it's 2015, calling out and solving genuine problems has taken a back burner, while we focus on made up things like racism, misogyny, and Nazis under the bed. There is nothing a member of the modern elite fears more than being labelled by a far-left lynch mob. Why is that, Maddie? Because they're cowards, short bus. Really? Yep, either cowards or pushing a far-left agenda, which is much worse. What people need to know is why we now have to deal with this disaster and why it's not being resolved. We didn't always have an ethnic crime problem. It's a recent development. So in this video, I'm going to explore the truth and history of Australia's African gangs. Australia has a long history of accepting refugees. We've taken people fleeing war and persecution since the middle of the 19th century. Historically, they've come from mostly European backgrounds, but since the end of World War II, we've seen the first gradual, then rapid shift away from this policy. In the early 70s, the infamously bad Gough Whitlam government opened the doors to South Vietnamese refugees, fleeing the Northern Communists. Over the next 20 years, Australia would resettle over 100,000 Vietnamese and refugees from other Asian countries. Much like the issues we've had with African gangs, this policy of allowing in Vietnamese refugees brought crime and its own gang culture. Where African crime is predominantly violent thefts and assaults, Vietnamese criminals tend to form organised syndicates focusing on mainly the importation of heroin and other drugs. They do have their fair share of petty street thugs nonetheless. In the 80s, we opened the doors to the Lebanese who brought their own gang culture. Lebanese bikie gangs now dominate the black market for guns and methamphetamines. Lebanese thugs terrorised residents of Sydney for years, especially around suburbs like Lakemba and Cronulla, harassing locals, starting fights, beating people up and worse. In 2005, Cronulla locals, sick of the authorities refusing to act on the violence and thuggery, took to the streets in protest. They stood up for Australian culture and their town, defending it from those who are little more than government-endorsed foreign invaders. They were patriots, sick of being trodden on and victimised. How do you think the media reacted to these patriots taking their country back, by the way? Gee, I wonder, Matty. Yeah, stupid question. They cried racist, but not against the Lebanese terrorising white locals. In their minds, the racists were the white locals who finally had enough of racial victimisation and decided to stand up for themselves. The media continue to lie and distort the truth to this day. 
We've opened our doors to an ever-increasing number of ethnic groups from around the world. And while many have assimilated into Australian culture, many others have not. One of the groups clearly not integrating are those from South Sudan. Uh, they are African Australians, thank you. Oh, hi Tony. Quick question. How can they be Australian if they can barely speak English and don't share our values or culture? Racist! Let's just be clear. They are Sudanese. They are Africans. The far-left establishment only recently introduced the term African-Australian because they think 1984 is an instruction manual and not a warning. Simply calling someone Australian doesn't make it so. For someone to be Australian, they need to think, speak, and act as an Australian in every way at a very minimum. They need to be fully assimilated into Australian culture, and Australia is not a multicultural country. It's a Western country. Moving on. In 2004, then Howard Government Minister for Immigration, Multicultural and Indigenous Affairs, Amanda Vanstone, published a column in far-left newspaper, The Age, entitled... The myopia of refugee advocates. The latest refugee crisis in Sudan is not the first. For more than a decade, there have been Christian Sudanese who have fled southern Sudan to neighbouring Kenya or Egypt. Comparatively, little is known of this crisis in Australia. This should be a matter of shame to some refugee advocates within Australia. The many stories of suffering associated with that crisis should not be unknown to Australians. Australia has provided permanent resettlement to more than 10,000 people from southern Sudan in the past three years. So while you may think it was only leftists who inflicted this latest wave of ethnic crime on the nation, it was in fact the so-called conservative Liberal National Coalition. Credit where it's due, in 2007, Howard Government Minister for Immigration and Multicultural Affairs, Kevin Andrews, called out African crime in Victoria. Kevin Andrews says he won't be apologising over his comments on African refugees. Migrant community leaders have accused him of creating race tension by saying that Sudanese arrivals have trouble assimilating. We cannot assume that the capacity of all of our potential migrants to integrate successfully is the same as their predecessors. And the minister isn't backing down. I'm not proposing to apologise for saying what uh, people are concerned about. That is, we've got challenges. There's no good, no good as uh, denying uh, that there are challenges in parts of the community. The best way to deal with the challenge is what we've done. Feminist police chief Christine Nixon, who had been in the job since 2001, took issue with the facts and immediately attacked his comments. They're not, in a sense, represented more than the proportion of them in the population. There's an underrepresentation of the Sudanese in crime stats. Daggy Uncle Conservative Andrew Bolt discussed this in his 2009 column. Best intent can't fudge Sudanese Somali crimes. He quotes Nixon directly. When we look across the state, 1.2% of people in Victoria were processed as an alleged offender in 2007 and 8. Of the African-born population, 63,513 people, 816 or 1.3% were processed as an alleged offender. These are similar to the figures for 2006 and 7. Our crime statistics show that 60,923 alleged offenders, 316 were born in Sudan, representing just over 0.5% of all offenders processed. This is the highest rate for all African-born offenders in Victoria. People from Egypt, Mauritius and South Africa all have larger populations living in Victoria and they reflect 0.11% and 0.1% and 0.14% of the offender population respectively. So for Mr. Bolt to claim that African refugees were overrepresented is just wrong. If Mr. Bolt wants to question my integrity, perhaps next time he should get his facts right. Oh, them's fighting words. I know, but guess who lands the knockout punch? What Nixon fails to add is that with just 6,200 Sudanese in Victoria, this means about 1 in 19 Sudanese each year gets picked up for alleged crimes. More than four times the 1 in 83 rate for all Victorians. That's damning. 
Not only does it show a serious issue with Sudanese crime, it shows police leadership were willing to lie about the problem to the general public. Nixon lied about African crime rates, and she used her position as chief commissioner to push far-left feminist politics. She also lowered entrance standards for women in order to encourage them to join the police force that she renamed the police service because feelings. In 2016, she even called for gender quotas. One thing Nixon and her far-left cohorts won't ever explain is why crime against the person, such as theft, assault, murder and robbery, has more than doubled since 2004. In fact, the ALP government appointed her chief commissioner in 2001, and three years later, this crime skyrocketed. That is despite the population only increasing by roughly 30%. True, this isn't entirely on her, but she is a symptom of the real problem, a society dominated by the left, especially the feminist left. Anyone who says this isn't a huge problem is either lying to themselves or to you. As for Sudanese crime, the statistics are damning. Sudanese make up roughly 0.15% of Victoria's population, but account for 1.1% of total crime, making them seven times more likely to commit crime than the general population. When you break it down by specific crimes, it's even worse. They are 12 times more likely to commit serious assault, 25 times more likely to commit aggravated burglary, 32 times more likely to commit riot and affray, and 56 times more likely to commit aggravated robbery. So while Sudanese aren't entirely responsible for the increase in crime, there is most certainly an African crime problem. Yet we still get moronic statements like this from the political establishment. So we put this to Victoria Police, and they told the project, we know that young people of African backgrounds are overly represented in some high harm crimes, and police in African Australian communities are working extremely hard to deal with the issue. Nonetheless, people from African backgrounds only represent a small portion of offenders in our community. The groups that have been labelled gangs are effectively groups of young people coming together, sometimes for one night, to commit offences. It's not what we have traditionally called gangs. So according to Victoria Police, they aren't gangs, they are groups coming together to commit offences. Uh, isn't that a gang, Maddie? Not according to Victoria Police, who totally, completely don't have a track record of blatantly lying to the population since 2001 or anything. Waleed Ali has some words for us all. Look, I'm not saying that African Australians don't commit crime. And I'm not denying that victims of those crimes have a right to feel afraid. But it's just a fraction of the crime being committed. You see, the fact that the Sudanese are vastly overrepresented in the crime statistics is completely irrelevant to the left because there aren't very many of them. Or something like that. According to the left, worrying about what is clearly a problem is somehow something to laugh at. Ha ha ha, you are worried about African gangs. Oh my, the little people are just so silly. I guess it only matters if it happens to them. Too bad the police actually disagree with old Wally regarding Sudanese crime. It's just the definition of gang they dispute. Here's Acting Chief Commissioner Shane Patton on the issue. Over December, we've seen a number of separate incidents which have cumulatively given rise to this whole issue of African youth offending. Nonetheless, it has been occurring for a period of time. So there are three primary incidents, if you like. On the 13th of December, we had an issue down in St Kilda where there were a number of African youth who were involved in a, in a brawl, if you like, uh, a punch-up in McDonald's with some backpackers. Um, they were dispersed. There were no significant injuries. No one wanted to complain about it. The backpackers were heading back overseas the next day. That's that issue. On the same evening, though, we had three Sri Lankan nationals who were robbed by a group of African youths. They had their phones stolen uh, and some personal items. Those matters are being investigated. They continue to be investigated, and we'll do everything we can to solve those. We obviously, a week later, had the Windham Airbnb uh, party, for lack of a better descriptor, and the subsequent affray after that, where we had, you know, up to 100 African youths out in the street. What happened then? 
On that evening, it was deemed by the tactical police commander at that time that the most appropriate approach was to disperse those youths. We had our operational response unit, our um, public order response teams there, and they were dispersed. Would I have liked to have seen people arrested at that time? Yes, obviously, if we could have, I would have loved to have seen more people arrested then because we just dispersed the group. But let's not second guess that tactical commander on the street. So I support what they've done. We've now got a subsequent investigation flowing into that and that investigation will continue to determine whether we can arrest anybody. Wally does highlight a relevant point, albeit accidentally. We don't just have an African gang problem. We actually have a crime problem and a problem with cowardly and potentially treasonous leftist politicians. Shane Patton talked about the lack of arrests following an African riot and backed his tactical officers' decisions. Recently, we had another incident where a large group of Africans brawled with a group of Pacific Islanders outside the Gasometer Hotel in Collingwood. Six people were sent to hospital and the police made no arrests there either. 200 youths involved in this huge riot at the Gasometer Hotel in Smith Street, Collingwood. Happened early yesterday morning. The fight broke out in the pub around 2.45 a.m., but then quickly spilled outside onto the streets. Youths throwing wild punches. Cars were vandalised. One driver even used a vehicle as a weapon. Terrified residents describing it as carnage, as you say. But the sources have now told the Herald Sun that police had up to a week's knowledge of the event. Local officers left pretty frustrated because they had raised it with police command in the lead up too, but police command decided that they would not devote any additional resources. Police now say they have been monitoring the event. The crowd made up primarily of Pacific Islanders, also African Australians. There's that new speak again. I find the lack of arrests interesting, given police managed to arrest six people during Nigel Farage's recent event in Melbourne. Yes, these were mostly Antifa idiots, but it does make you think. Also, why is it that Victoria Police can manage to arrest zero people in a wild street brawl despite being warned in advance, yet seem more than capable of fining Victorians nearly $400 million a year for minor traffic infractions? Ahem, <clears throat> that's a false equivalence, Matty. Yeah, true. I shouldn't compare the criminal extortion of innocent citizens to the police not doing their actual job. It's also unfair to blame police entirely. They get their orders from the top, and the current Victorian government have proven they cannot be trusted to do just about anything. What we know for sure is that we have a problem, and it's not just with African crime, but with crime in general, and ultimately with left-wing enablers who let it happen. Since Gough Whitlam criminally opened the borders, Australia has seen a rise in immigration from around the world, and we've been force-fed the racist doctrine of multiculturalism. People are becoming more and more divided. The fact that it was two non-Australian ethnic groups fighting in Collingwood recently highlights exactly what's wrong with the country right now. Multiculturalism does not mean people of different races, aka cultures, living in harmony. It means people of different races, aka cultures, forming tribes and acting in their own interests with their own culture. It means the replacement of a monoculture with multiple cultures. That means replacing white people with people who are not white. This is worse than racism. Meanwhile, we have liars like Waleed Ali deliberately distorting the truth in order to manipulate public sentiment. In his video on African gangs, he points out that crime has dropped by 8% over the last year, while ignoring the fact that crime against the person has more than doubled since 2004. As I've already mentioned, of course. This is a blatant lie by omission, something the left-wing media do almost pathologically. What is true is that our nation has a growing problem with crime and societal division. But this isn't the real threat. The real threat is blatant dishonesty from an establishment acting against the interests of the Australian people. The state doesn't even keep ethnicity data in crime statistics. It's all recorded by country of birth, meaning it doesn't matter what your heritage is, if you are born in Australia and commit a crime, it's recorded as a crime committed by an Australian. Therefore, the crime stats likely don't even show the true result of multiculturalism. It's hard not to see this as a deliberate distortion given the tendency of our leftist rulers to lie so often.
They even made a point to decry racism and bigotry and push all the usual far left talking points after the ethnic brawl in Collingwood. As though that's the real problem and not the descent of our nation into crime, tribalism and ethnic enclaves. The truth is, African gangs are not the enemy. Nor are Vietnamese gangs, Islander gangs, or the masses of migrants from cultures completely opposed to our existence. They are merely a symptom of tyrannical rule by a feminized, dishonest, power-addicted elite hell-bent on creating a multicultural El Dorado. Encouraged by, um, certain groups into committing what can only be described as cultural suicide. Until we stop the true threat and take our country back, things like this are just going to get worse. Thanks for watching, make sure you share the truth around, and I'll see ya when I see ya. Who are you? I'm on. I'm Jamaican Muddy. I've saw my this piece puff. <coughs> Yeah, man. <sniffs>